Inspector. Thank you, Member for Townsville. I call the Member for Bonnie. Thank you, Madam Speaker. For most of us, coronavirus has put our normal lives on hold, but for a number of crooks in my part of the Gold Coast, they didn't get the stay-home message. Tonight, I want to raise the concerns of my community about the level of crime in our suburbs. It's gone unchecked, and many people feel unsafe in their own homes and on their streets. In March, after hearing stories of break-ins, stolen cars and property and other brazen attacks across Parkwood and Arundel, I ran a community crime forum at the iconic Arundel Tavern. I don't say iconic lightly, uh, and a big shout out to Deb and her amazing team there. Their renovations are looking fantastic, and I was honoured to pour the first beers the other day when they opened again. Uh, ironically, at the same time that I was getting messages or hearing about the increased crime, the Arundel Police Hub, a fantastic facility with over 100 police who are deployed from our area base there, was opened. Those officers are the elite rap squad, and it does concern me to hear a number of them are currently on border duties instead of getting around our city. But getting back to the forum, we had over 200 locals come along and share their views with senior police officers and our shadow ministers. It was important because it let our community be heard by the people who can do something about what they're going through. Much of the night was spent talking about youth crime. There is a clear sentiment that the justice system is not working, particularly when it comes to repeat young offenders. Stories of juveniles getting caught and having a slap on the wrist means residents feel like there is no point even reporting a crime. It means these kids will often laugh off the possibility of ever being held to account for their actions. Most attendees filled out a survey, and the top three concerns about crime were safety at home, soft punishments on young people committing crimes, and locals scared to use public transport, particularly at night. That last one is a real worry because these two suburbs have light rail stage two going right next to them and we do not want any disincentive to use those trams. Alarmingly, 77 per cent of people felt the criminal justice system is not working. People said they wanted to see more police on the ground and increase penalties. Two very special people came along that night too, Brett and Belinda Beasley. Brett and Belinda lost their 17-year-old son Jack last December. He was stabbed to death outside the IGA in the middle of surface paradise. These Parkwood locals have gone through hell. Their immense loss happened just before Christmas and only months before what would have been Jack's 18th birthday. The young men charged with Jacko's murder have been granted bail and that shattered the Beasley's faith in our justice system. Brett summed it up saying, it's a kick in the guts, but that's the system. It absolutely Member, that's unparliamentary. I ask you to withdraw. I withdraw. They've set up a foundation to change the culture of knife crime and to reform a system that is putting no fear in these grubs that their actions have consequences. To wrap up, we need more police on the ground, tougher penalties and a system that doesn't just put offenders straight back on the streets. Member, you've also used unparliamentary language again. Um, even if you are quoting, you still can't use unparliamentary language. I ask you to withdraw. I withdraw. Thank you, Member. I call the member for 